Hey guys, so um, let me see if I get some better lighting. It's a little brighter. Let me throw this little light over here. I'm dry as hell. Coffee, water, water, <laughs> water. <laughs> yeah, I'd be on it with the water, but um, I am moving. Okay, so I've been in Missouri, Missouri my entire life. I started out born and raised St. Louis, Missouri for college. I went to Springfield, Missouri, which is literally just a hop, skip, and jump down the road. It's like three and a half hours away from my hometown, right? Um, and then from there, after graduation, so on and so forth, I moved back to St. Louis, and I've kind of been in St. Louis ever since. Um, so my big sister, she says... On the uh, West Coast, never eat soggy waffles. Yeah. <laughs> I still have to do the never eat soggy waffles, y'all, just to make sure. But yeah, so she lives on the West Coast, has lived on the West Coast since like 2011 or something, something crazy like that. And um, it's always been our goal to kind of like live together in our adult years, like live in the same city, um, you know, do brunches, lunch. Um, so on and so forth. And so now we're getting down to the point where it's time for me to move. And baby, I don't know what to say first. Like, I'm really excited about the move. I'm nervous, but, you know, they say if it's, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough or whatever the case may be. So that's fine. But uh, I'm looking like at my income and stuff like that. Now, mind you, I just got a promotion and we're going to put a pin in the, um, we're going to stop right here. So I'm looking at my income and I'm trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to hack it because I wanted to have like at the minimum, like 6,000 saved, right? I wanted to have 6,000 saved. Uh, there have been things this year that have kind of drained my sevens account, um, you know, helping with my mom's, um, helping uh, but in the majority of my mom's um, burial um, and, you know, just here and there, like my car, like what month was that? I think that was like set August or September or something like that. When was the baby born? The baby was born. I think she was born in September. I can't remember. Not right now. Anyway, it's really early here. But um, I ended up paying like a thousand dollars just in that month alone for my car like so my savings has taken a major hit major hit so i'm sitting here thinking about how like i can build that up again and like i said minimum six thousand dollars is what i want to move with um and i'm i started a new position right so i got a promotion and i started a new position um and it's more money um, but my checks I'm used to, cause I was a team lead originally. Um, so I went from just being a phone agent to switching over to a new department to now becoming, being like claims trained so I can process medical claims. Then I, um, so we process the medical claims. Then we needed to go ahead and, um, they needed a team lead. So I applied for the job. I got that job. And then once I decided that I was going to go ahead and move to Vegas, I talked to my my um, superiors and they just, you know, gave me some some recommendations in regards to how to go about, um, you know, getting a position that will allow me to telecommute, which essentially will allow me to uh, move basically anywhere. There was uh, just a couple of stipulations and they're not like big, big deals at all. Uh, like one of the stipulations is I can't stay more than 60 miles away from the nearest United Healthcare um, in whatever area that I'm in. And <laughs> that's not a problem. So uh, just find an apartment or a house that is less than 60 miles away from the United Healthcare wherever I want to go and I'm a-okay, right? So, um, I'm looking at trying to sell the goal, the, the original plan. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, I got, um, yeah, I became a team lead. Okay. And basically at first that was unlimited overtime, right? So unlimited OT on the clock, racking it up. No, no, no big deal. 
then they started minimizing our OT. And then they started doing it to where, like, the leads get OT one pay period and then the other employees get OT the second pay period. Like, I think for, like, there was, like, 75 people in the office or in our department. I can't remember which. But um, they would give us literally, like, 70 hours of OT. And it's just like, okay, not everybody wants to work OT, so that's cool. Not everybody is eligible to work OT, so that's cool too. But breaking it down, it's like the people who are eligible and who want it, uh, once you break it down and did the math, I think everybody got like, you know, anywhere from five to 10 hours of OT, um, a pay period or every other pay period, depending on, you know, how that goes. And that's like, it's really nothing. I mean, it helps a little bit with like gas and stuff like that, but it's nothing massive or nothing major that'll allow you to save like thousands. You know what I'm saying? So I got this promotion and I was super excited because it's going to help me um, transition and it's going to make the move a lot easier, so on and so forth. And I'm like, okay, it's more money. Like, and it's, it's not like a significant amount or yeah a significant amount of money like it's not a major difference but it's like six thousand six seven thousand a year um just on the base pay and then once you start racking the ot so on and so forth like that's when it starts making a difference right y'all know how that goes so i'm sitting here like damn like that's lit. I'm excited. Like, I got this position. And, like, y'all, I needed that position because I was like, dang, like, I'm going to have to, I, if I didn't, I was going to have to start from ground zero and, like, start applying to places in, um, in the West Coast, so on and so forth. Um, but, anywho, so we're at that point where I'm just like, okay, well, the promotion is everything we needed. And then when, you know, I started the promotion, they were like, oh, hey, well, the, the newer people aren't eligible to work OT. And I'm sorry, I look so dry right now. Let me put some, at least something on my lips. But my skin has been really dry since I came back from my cruise. Like, really dry. Like, really, really dry. And I have, like, I bought, like, a ton. And, y'all, when I say a ton, oh, I did bring the seashell back. I don't know if you're allowed to do this, but I was in the sand and I, I was like kneeling on the seashell and I was like, what the hell is this? And I pulled it out of the water and it's a seashell and I just like tucked it in my purse. Um, I think when we went to Jamaica, they told us like, and this is in 2014, they told us that we weren't allowed to take seashells off the beach. So I don't know if in the Bahamas it's the same way. If you're Bohemian and you, you're watching this, I'm sorry. I just wanted a piece of man this vacation was lit but we'll we'll get to that here soon enough dang do i not have any oh child okay so anywho oh yes yes there i go okay all right Whew. Mm. Mm. but i bought a whole bunch of like masks and stuff like that eye masks and facial masks and stuff to kind of rejuvenate my skin but i haven't had time to actually sit down relax and do them so anywho so i got this promotion and like i said it allows me to do everything i need to but the newer the people that are hired uh or just recently got hired they're not eligible for ot until they get out of like training the training period now and i get that i'm not mad at that at all because this job is so complicated and so like detail oriented and specific and if i mess up anything it can go against like uh, government regulations uh, for healthcare, so on and so forth. So I get that, you know, it's not a position where you could just, you learn it in like two weeks and then you could just, you know what I'm saying? It's like a minute. Um, so you're not eligible for OT. So I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, well that's cool because I'm making more money, but I'm sitting here doing the math just now. And yeah, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to hack it. I'm looking at this, like the math that I've done and basically, and I'm very much a, like, I love math. Math is like my thing. Um, and so because we're basically starting from ground zero, um, it, to save like the minimum that I wanted, I would have to work like a total of 181 hours or 182 hours, however you see fit, um, of OT. 
And so I broke that down. Like if I worked 10 hours a week, it would take me 18 weeks to make that money. And that's like four and a half months. I don't have four and a half months um, to like sit there and rack OT up before this move. So I'm like really nervous. Like the goal was to move originally by February. And then once I got this promotion, I was like, well, I can move sooner than that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can move sooner than that. And so the goal was to move like by January. And now looking at this, because I don't know when I'm technically going to be out of training, I'm just, I really don't know. Um, and I know like I've watched a lot of videos about people who like just picked up and moved, not just picked up and moved, but they plan to move um, across country, so on and so forth. So I've been doing my research, so on and so forth. And about the average that people are able to save up um, is about six to ten thousand uh, dollars. But these people like move back in with their mom, you know, with their parents, or they move in with the boyfriend, or anything of that nature, or something of that nature. And I don't know. I just, I guess, I don't have those luxuries. Like I'm really trying to now. I do a lot already, as it is. So I work my full-time job, right? So I work my nine to five, my seven to three thirty, eight to four thirty, whatever you want to say. So I work that job, okay? Outside of that, I'm a makeup artist, okay? And though I don't have appointments like every day of the week uh, or multiple appointments on Saturdays, multiple appointments on Sundays, this is the slower season, you know what I'm saying? But... Um, you know, I, I want, I would like to say that it's pretty steady. It's not as steady as what I would like for it to be, but it's steady enough for my sanity. You know what I'm saying? It's what I can, it's what I can handle right now. So I'm not complaining at all about not having any, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> about not having, uh, more clients than what I have, because I feel like God knows like my mental state and you know what I've been through this year and he doesn't want to put more on me than I can bear. And I respect and appreciate that. Um, so it's not as steady, but it's steady enough. Uh, and then on top of that, I do lash extensions as well, only on certain days of the week, but that's still a service that I offer. That's still a service that, uh, keeps income coming in, so on and so forth. So right now, um, I have three streams of income, um, kind of a fourth because I kind of do hair, but I don't do hair anymore since I broke my hand, so on and so forth. But if somebody asks me, and I f I'm filling up to the task. I'll do it like for homecoming. I was doing ponytails out the wazoo, man. Like those low, uh, deep bang swoop situations. I knocked like four of those out in a day on top of having like four faces to do and a, a lash extension. So I'd be going sometimes, but other times it's more, more calm. And we, we need that balance. So um, I am moving into my slow season when it comes to like makeup and things of that nature, which is a okay because I still have my main job. Um, however, I'm trying to figure out how the heck with this job I can because with that I can hack this because my rent because I went on a month a month I went on a month a month back in August so my rent increased the one hundred dollars per month. That I'm on the month to month. Now, in order to make me going on a month to month worth it, I have to move out. Like, I have to be gone before August, but tech, I mean, by August, but technically prior, before August. Like, I need to at least, like, I can't do a full year on a month to month because then that doesn't make sense and I've wasted $1,200. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm trying to take that into effect and stuff and y'all like this is crazy so i'm just on here asking for like tips um like any any assistance or you know knowledge if you guys have um experience or know somebody with experience on moving across country and saving money while doing so uh but without the option of without the option or the obligate the option to move in with their parents or their significant other, let me know because I think like I'm paying, I'm looking at my my bills that I pay for the month of October right now. Just looking at them flat, they're not much. They're like a full check on mine. So when I get my second check, you know, it's more of saving and then like, you know, doing the essentials like grocery shopping, so on and so forth. But 
there's no way in the world with the income that I have coming in because it's limited that I am going to be able to save $6,000 in what? This is uh, November 1st is tomorrow. So November, December, January, and three months, three, four months tops. Um, your girl concerned. Like, I don't know. How do people do this? And I'm completely okay. Like, I'm definitely selling, you know, basically everything. Um, I'm selling everything outside of my, like, what I need for work and stuff. I'm selling all of my, like, furniture and stuff. So, I'm going to start that in October. I mean, in November, I'm going to start selling that stuff and, you know, have that going for us. However, ugh, I'm nervous as hell. I'm nervous as hell. Like, I got to figure it out. I know... We gonna do it. We gonna have to. We gonna have to get it done. We gonna. We're gonna do it. We gonna do it. Okay. We gonna do it. But it's just like, oh, child. And then I'm also nervous because, and I guess this is just a vent session. But I'm also nervous because there is. Let me see. So looking at the cost of living, right? Looking at the cost of living because I'm moving to the West Coast. So the cost of living in. Vegas because I was going to move I was going to move to um, Los Angeles but yeah yeah mm -mm. Mm -mm. nope like they charging 1500 2000 out there for a room for a room y'all for a room okay uh, uh we we can't we can't and we ain't purr. so I'm gonna move to Vegas and telecommute basically back and forth for like appointments and things of that nature so that's fine but still rent would be double for like what i what i have now i have a one bedroom one bath it's pretty spacious hardwood floors is not updated and it's not the best of areas but right now i'm paying like 600 uh to stay here and that's not including you know utilities so on and so forth right and mind y'all i don't have a car note like i don't pay a car note at all uh because i bought my car in cash uh, three years ago and that mug on his last leg so I don't think I it would be worth it to take it with me to Vegas um, because I think to ship the car alone is like a thousand plus now mind y'all it's an 04 Alero uh, paid 1400 for it three years ago um, somebody just side swept it <laughs> when I was going on my vacation somebody side swept it um, so it, you know I mean I don't I don't feel like it would be smart to ship such a right like invest so much in such a in a car like I feel like that's wasted money right so I thought of it like I don't know if I could sell it I don't know if it's worth anything like what y'all can have it five hundred dollars like if you give me five hundred dollars y'all can definitely have this car um, like and it still runs because I've kept maintenance up regularly I've replaced every uh almost everything that needs to be replaced on the car uh gets me from point a to point b it's never broken down or anything of that nature on me. So, it, it, it yo, I got my 1400 out of the car, okay? Definitely got my 1400 out of the car. But, um, yeah, I just don't think it's smart to spend $1,000 uh, $1, on a car to ship it when I paid $1,000 for it, like, years and years ago. Years and years. Three years ago. Basically, 2017 is 2019. It's going to be 2020. May 2020. May 2020 will be three years. So, uh, I'm going to need a new car. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to need a new car when I move. And that alone, like, I've been working on my credit score. My credit score hasn't always been the best. You know, college kind of. Uh, no, you know, financial literacy wasn't a thing. Okay? It wasn't a thing um, back in my day. So, we're, we're learning all of that stuff. And we're getting to the point where, you know, we make smarter choices when it comes to our finances, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so I'm just like, I'm definitely going to need a new car. Definitely going to need a down payment. Want to put like two, 3000 down. Wish I could buy it outright, but just in this transitional period in my life, I'm not able to just buy a car outright, uh, anymore unless I get a clunker and I'm kind of over those, you know, we're, we're approaching 30. I haven't had a new car, um, in a long time. It's been a minute. I haven't had a like new car. Like, uh, I think. The newest, like 2012, I think since 2012, I haven't had a new car. Like in 2012, I had a 2008 Chevy Impala, all the bells and whistles, so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to need to get a new car. And we're going to have to add that note to our expenses on top of doubling up in rent. 
you know what I'm saying, uh, for anything that I need. Like I need, honestly, I need a two to three bedroom apartment house or condo. Uh, one bathroom is A-OK -okay with me. If it has one and a half, I'm not mad about that either. In a better neighborhood because this neighborhood that I've lived in, I, I made it work like it, we've made it work okay, but yeah, I'm moving into adulthood and I'm moving into the next like transit like this. Oh, y'all. This last like few years of my life have been, you know, I'm gonna take what I can get at this point. Like it was it was full of desperation and um, a lot of selling myself short just to, you know, make sure that it was about survival. That's what I was. So this these past few years were about survival. Now we're transitioning to the point of our lives where it's time to live and it's time to indulge and it's time, you know, it's, it's, it's that we own that type of time. Okay. So I'm trying to make those conscious decisions on, you know, what neighborhood and no, I don't have any children, but I also don't want to hear gunshots outside my house every night. Like I do here. Right. Uh, I don't want to hear an ambulance just all day or day like I do here. Right. I don't want to hear people arguing cussing and fighting outside like banging out literally banging outside i'm gonna i'm good on that like i've done my three years i'm good let me out of this mofo um i hate it here but <laughs> um yeah so i'm looking at that you know i just i want nice things and i deserve nice things and we are going to get to the point where we can afford nice things so i'm setting myself up to live that type of life out in the west coast but y'all just the initial like just mapping everything out financially i'm just in the f and i think financially i'll be fine like but you got to think about like application fees they usually want first last month's rent you know what i'm saying on top of that down payment on a new car uh insurance is another bill that we'll be adding um it's just it's just stuff like that and it's Got me, got me a little shooketh. I ain't gonna lie, got me a little shooketh. So I said all of that to say this. I am so nervous. We are still moving. But if you guys have any, um, like any, any tips, any advice, any, any, anything, <laughs> I need it. I need help, honey, because this is this is gonna be, um, probably like the biggest move that I've made thus far. It is the biggest move that I've made thus far. So. If y'all have any of those little nuggets, I definitely need them. Um, and if you live in Vegas, I'll be there shortly. So, um, yeah, let's be friends, okay? Because I'm definitely going to need some friends. <laughs> definitely going to need some friends. But, um, yeah, so if y'all have any nuggets or anything of that, any pearls of wisdom, I gladly welcome them. Just uh, if you have my phone number, just shoot me a text or, you know, call me uh, if you are my Facebook friend or not my Facebook friend and you see this, just message me. Just shoot me a message on what, like, what your thoughts are, what your recommendations are, so on and so forth. Like, hey, you know, my friend used this. Have you ever thought about X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening to me, man. Talk to you later. Bye.